There we go. Okay, so welcome everyone to the second uh, public forum uh, of the Jones Library Building Committee specific to the uh, all user multi stall restrooms that are planned for the renovated and expanded library. Um, this is a public forum. It is not a uh, meeting of the outreach since I do not see a quorum. Um, but I do have with me today uh, Sharon Sherry from the library director, um, Craig DiCarlo, and Will Fernandez, both from Colliers, our owner project manager. And I am Alex Lefebvre. I am uh, the chair of the um, Jones Library uh, Building Committee Outreach Subcommittee. <laughs> so um, I see we have some attendees in the audience. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, this meeting is being recorded, but we definitely welcome anyone um, to raise their hand at any point um, during the presentation. Um, we're here to answer any questions that we can or take any information that you want to provide. So with that, um, I'm going to ask Sharon to go ahead and pull up the presentation and we'll get started. Can you see it? I can. Thank you. Awesome. And Sharon, if you can keep an eye on hands, that would be amazing. Is that possible? Can I? I don't know that I, I don't can? know that I can do that and share my screen at the same time. No. Oh, all right. Um, Let me see if I can do that. I think I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so uh, welcome. Um, so go ahead and turn to the ne next slide. Uh, so the Jones Library Building Committee um, has agreed to use um, all user restrooms um, all throughout the building. So on the uh, garden level or on the uh, entry level off Amity Street, the second floor and third floor, they'll all be single occupant, uh, all user restrooms. And then on the garden level, which is the community space is where we would have a, a all user multi stall restroom. So what we're really talking about today is that restroom because it's the one that would not be a single user restroom. Um, and so the decision was made. Um, Sharon, you got a little, yeah, there we go. So the decision was made because all user restrooms have been found to benefit the widest range of people. And that includes parents with children of different gender, people with disabilities who may require an accompaniment of an attendant of a different gender, as well as gender diverse people. Um, Multi-stall all user restrooms also maximize space um, and minimize bathroom lines, which since we are dealing with a pretty compressed tight space um, in the library to meet all of the library needs, um, having a bathroom that maximizes space is really good. Um, and there's a link on this presentation and this presentation is available, I think on both the library as well as the um, town website. There's a company, uh, there's a, it's actually an architecture firm has done a video uh, called Stalled, which I think Sharon's gonna click on here. and. It's just if you're if you're new to um, all gender restrooms, it's uh, got a lot of information um, that you can look at in terms of what some other designs look like, um, you know how they've been implemented, why they've been implemented, et cetera. So it's just a, a nice little uh, resource to have. So on the next slide. Um, so what is currently being proposed, and this is what I said previously, so all bathrooms um, will be all user, single occupants on the first, second, and third floor, and then the multi-stall. So this design right here is a preliminary design that was provided by the architects. Um, it was preliminarily approved by the Jones Library Building Committee. Um, the red dotted lines are not wall, but could be wall. If for some reason we wanted to separate those spaces, it allows for it to go back into, you know, sort of gendered restrooms. Um, we are based on the public feedback we've gotten to date, um, likely asking the architects to come up with a more open design um, that doesn't necessarily have people choosing which way to go into, um, but instead, you know, more of an open, visible design, because we're hearing a lot of people saying, you know, they would be comfortable if there were visibility around security issues. Um, and one of the issues that we deal with at the library, um, because libraries are for everyone, um, is that we do have people who have um, 
uh, addiction, um, you know, problems that they're dealing with addiction. Um, and so using library bathrooms um, can often be a place where people might uh, overdose. And so we want to be really, really cognizant of making sure that we can keep all of our patrons safe. Um, and that if someone does overdose, uh, that um, the library staff, which is trained on using Narcam, is aware that somebody's in the bathroom, that they need help, and that we can get to them uh, in a quickly manner to make sure um, that they survive. So that's one of many factors being uh, under consideration as part of the bathroom. Um, and so we, um, go ahead, Sharon, go to the next slide. So one of the things that we're looking at um, in terms of the bathroom is the type of stalls. So a standard privacy stall is what you would see in most, um, what we would think of as sort of traditional bathrooms that were installed in the past in most public places. There's a divider between the stalls and there's about a 12 inch uh, gap above the floor. Um, and in between the dividers, you can see everybody's feet. Somebody drops the toilet paper, you can see it, et cetera. They're the least expensive to build and install, but they're also the least private. Um, but they also have the least amount of security concerns because if somebody has overdosed, passed out, you know, it doesn't even have to be a, an addiction, right? It could be somebody who's passed out for another reason. They're really easy to see. Um, a patron can report back to staff that somebody's on the floor. The semi-private option um, has dividers uh, that stop short of the floor. It can be a gap usually of between four to eight inches. Um, it's moderately more expensive than the standard privacy, and it offers often a nice balance between people feeling like they have the privacy when you're in an all-user restroom, as well as the security concerns of being able to possibly see feet or other issues um, to make sure that everybody is safe um, in the bathrooms. And then the third option for doors is maximum privacy. And this is, you know, dividers and stalls extend fully from the floor to the ceiling. Um, when you do that, code requires a floor drain, light fixtures, and sprinkler in each stall. So as one can imagine, that becomes the most expensive of the option because of the additional um, code requirements for those types of stall. So it's the most private, um, the most expensive, but then also uh, creates security concerns about patrons who may um, be in need of assistance and you may not be able to see or tell. So um, go ahead, Sharon, to the next slide. Um, so these are just a couple of all user multi-stall restrooms that have been used in other public spaces. And they are um, included in this just to really get the dialogue going. Um, some people have used all user multi-stall restrooms, some people haven't. And so um, we thought it was good for people to see sort of other ideas to help um, with the thinking of what's possible. So this particular design is used at a synagogue. Um, it's a pretty straightforward, you know, floor to ceiling, maximum privacy, one row of stalls on one side, bathrooms on the other. Um, go ahead, Sharon, to the next. Um, this is a design at a university. So this is a little bit like what our design potentially looks like now, um, where you would necessarily have, but you'd have stalls on both sides with a sink in the middle. Um, and so that offers a slightly different feel and flow, a little bit more open than the prior design. Um, and then this is a design actually at an elementary school. So this is the most open design where, uh, I mean, this is obviously a school hallway, but where um, the sink area would be potentially open out into the public, which would allow for you know, security concerns to be eliminated. And what we've heard from some people is they would be more comfortable because it doesn't feel like a closed in space where they might feel uncomfortable using uh, restrooms with people of all genders on the gender spectrum. So those are just three ideas um, in terms of getting the conversation started. Yep. So the timeline for the decisions that the Jones Library Building Committee, which is a town committee, needs to make around the bathrooms um, is here. And so the first public forum uh, we had last Tuesday on January 3rd, this is our second and final public forum. Um, and then there's a survey uh, that we've started on December 22nd, and it will close on January 15th. And we'll in a minute show people how to get to that. 
Um, that survey is available online, but there are also paper copies um, in the library that people can fill out and complete and put into a, a box. And then those just get manually entered into the survey results. Um, the Jones Library Building Committee and Design Subcommittee are meeting on January 19th and January 26th at 4.30, um, where it's anticipated uh, conversations around the community feedback will be had in those meetings. And then a possible vote is scheduled for February 2nd or February 9th in terms of giving final direction to the architects. Um, the last possible date for us to make any changes to the bathroom. Um, February 9th is the absolute drop dead date. Uh, no changes will be made to the bathroom design after that. So we really want to make sure that everybody is filling out the surveys and giving us feedback um, before January 15th. So the next slide. So um, the survey has, it's super short, uh, very quick to fill out, asks if you've ever used a multi-stall all-user restroom. If you did, what did you like or not like about it? We ask people to vote on the proposed stalls. Um, and then we ask people just generally to share their thoughts about any features, design elements that they'd like to see. And then the last bit is just a couple of demographic questions um, in terms of age group, gender identity, do you have children, are you a caregiver, things like that to help us um, uh, hopefully make sure we're uh, reaching the widest spectrum of, of community members to have input from everybody. Um, so ways to share your opinion. So this is a link to the all user restroom survey. So this is actually available if you go on the Jones Library website, um, there is a link uh, there to the survey. Um, there is, uh, I think also a link, Sharon, if I'm not mistaken, if anybody uses a public computer um, in the library, there's also uh, a link to the survey there. Um, and the weekly newsletter that goes out uh, from the Jones Library also contains a link. So if you're on that uh, weekly newsletter that comes out on the weekend, um, you'll find a copy of it in there. So uh, yeah, so this is the survey. It's super quick to answer. Um, there are a couple of things that are required, um, but again, like I said, super fast. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. Um, and then, so uh, like we did for the broader open comments at the beginning of this process, we've created this Padlet. Um, so the Padlet has a link to the stalled online. It's got a link to the survey. But then this is an also a place where people can add their own comments. They can rate designs that they like, and then they can also actually upload their own pictures. So we have people here who are you know, three people have rated uh, the different designs. They've added their comments. If you keep scrolling down, Sharon, they've added their comments. Um, and also of note, if you click on any of the pictures, it will actually uh, make them full screen and you can scroll through pictures this way. So you're not looking at teeny tiny uh, uh, pictures. So these are just different bathroom designs. I think click the X, Sharon. There we go. And then if you keep scrolling down, you'll see, I think some people have added their own. Uh, so, you know, these are different things that people have added, you know, some, somebody wants a sanitary product station, which is great. Somebody included this as an open design and then more people can just comment. So it's a nice space to be able to share comments, thoughts, photos, uh, and vote on other ideas. Uh, oh, yep. So go ahead and close out of that. So X on the top right of the tab, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think you need to close out of this to go back to the presentation. Oop. Okay, there we go. Thanks. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, and then the info at joneslibrary.org. Um, oops. Hit cancel or close. <laughs> Hold, please. Okay. Uh, info at joneslibrary.org. So that's the same email that we've been using throughout this process. Um, 
so folks can send an email to info at joneslibrary.org. It's a different way to share information with us about the bathroom, thoughts or comments. And then the submit a comment form. You can also click on that link, um, which is also in the library uh, website. And the thing to know about this is when you enter uh, a comment um, using the comment form, it doesn't uh, give us your email address. So if you uh, use this form um, and you want a response from us, we actually can't respond to you because we, we don't know who you are. So um, if you, better to use the info at Jones um, if you'd like us to respond to something. Um, so I think that is it for, yeah. So we've gotten, I think about 135 responses so far to the survey. Um, we've had, I think 20 people go on the Padlet and use that. Um, so it, feeling feeling good that we're getting a lot of nice conversation. A lot of people have a lot of a lot of really great um, feedback and thoughts about what they'd like to see in the bathroom design. And I'm certainly grateful for all of that feedback and people taking time. And I would also encourage people, um, if you fill out the survey, if you do it online, if you could forward it to anyone and everyone you know, the more people we get to fill out the survey, um, you know, the 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 better the better represented the community is in terms of the, the conversation and dialogue. So that's it. I don't know if anyone in the audience has any questions, comments, thoughts. Um, you're welcome to come into the Please room. raise your hand if you're Please interested. Raise your hand, we, have, yeah. <laughs> we do have two attendees. I'm happy to bring one of you, both of you, neither of you, whatever you guys want. We're happy to bring you into the room and um it, you know, to have a conversation, I think, is really helpful because there are things that we take for granted and or things that we may not be thinking about. Or or there's always the the thing. Yeah, we take for granted that people, you know, are watching meetings and, and know the thought process. So, yeah. OK, seeing no hands, I see that I did exactly 17 minutes is what is what the last moment forum I did in 17 minutes as well. So um, these are recorded. They can be shared. Um, they're on the town website under recordings, I think. So um, appreciate those of you who showed up for the, the public forum. Um, hope you'll complete the survey if you haven't. Hope you'll pass it along to others. And we look forward to hearing from everybody. Thank you all. Thank you, Colliers, for coming yet again. <laughs> appreciate your time. Hey. Certainly. And uh, I just want to say uh, fantastic job compiling all this information and making it accessible to everyone. That's what we do or try. <laughs> Great job. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Good night. <laughs>